Living Waters presents On the Box. Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to another edition of On the Box. Mark and I are your hosts today and glad to be here. Good to be here. Aren't we? Suited up and ready to play, Coach. All right. On what team? Oh, the Vikings. Jennifer Pepling asks a good question in the chat room. <laughs> Is it, was it, is it sin to be a Steeler fan, or is it sin to, vote, to root against the Steelers? No, I think it was Jennifer's God, from Pittsburgh. God has turned his back on the Steelers. No, 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 no. God has turned his back on those teams that are named after pagan gods. Well, that would be like the Vikings. The Vikings, yeah. You didn't mean that, though. Huh? I didn't mean that? Right. Well, the, the Texans, that's not the name of a pagan god. The 49ers, you know, the Steelers. I've Steelers are named... Huh? I've talked to a lot of pagans out of Texas, though. Both of our listeners are from Texas, so we better... <laughs> Anyways, uh-huh. that's not what the show's about. Uh, we do have a couple of announcements for you. Why you go ahead and plug away at what you want to do there, if you want to. You want to? Go ahead. You want to know what Mark's doing on the internet right now? I'm not going to tell you. We have a select number of complimentary tickets to this year's Deeper Conference, October 14th and 15th at uh, Calvary, Bible, uh, Calvary Community Church. Sorry, I'm confusing my Calvaries. Calvary Community Church in Westlake Village, October 14th and 15th. We do have a set of number, set number of complimentary tickets. And uh, if you are certain you can attend the Deeper Conference in Westlake Village, outside of Los Angeles, uh, just send us your contact information at deeper at livingwaters.com, wow. deeper at livingwaters.com, and you may receive one or more complimentary tickets to attend the Deeper Conference. Anita is standing by. All right. All right. You know what next Tuesday is, Mark? Other than being the Tuesday after the Steelers win another I, game and I the Vikings lose? I don't know. What? Our 200th show. Actually, it's a week from Tuesday, October 18th. Did you get my email about that? I did, that we should, we should host, broadcast a show live from yes. Disney World yes. in Florida. Yes. And uh, my several, of us, several of us in the ministry and leadership have corporate... American Express cards. They don't trust me with one of those. They don't. They do too. Yeah, maybe. A if they, bit. if I have one, you have one. Yeah. So, but we're going to use Ron's. We're <laughs> we're trying to get Rachel to. You don't have one, Ron? That's a fib. Huh. He just fibbed to us right there. Anyways, we want to know what you would like us to do on Tuesday, October eighteenth, to celebrate the two hundredth episode of On the Box. Now, remember, on the hundredth episode, we almost set the place on fire. Yes. With one hundred trick candles on that a cake. Fun that Ray tried to put out with a piece of paper. That made for some good television. <laughs> That's right. Anyway, so on the box at livingwaters.com, on the box at livingwaters.com, email us for what you would like to see on the 200th episode of On the Box. 200 candles. Two, we, you know what, Danny and I were talking about, we talked to Daniel about it uh, early this morning, getting 200 candles and actually having the fire department on hand. <laughs> Well, that wasn't happens. my idea. That was no. Arsels. But, you know what, da- but uh, Uncle Dave, who's uh, back behind the camera today, he had several good ideas involving the number 200. Huh. Um, yeah, maybe we'll share some of those. But they were good ideas. All right. All right. So, you want to know what Planned Parenthood is trying to teach your kids on college campuses? I want to warn you in advance, there might be some yelling after this video. Take a look. We are not going to try to use science or evidence. The fact of the matter is that this is a this is opinion. We can we all have our own beliefs as far as when human life begins. Science is not ultimate truth. That's why it's science. It's always being studied, it's always being taught and retaught and rearticulated. So to insinuate that this science is absolute truth on a matter of what is human life is illegitimate. What is inside a body that cannot function outside its host is not a child. It's a matter of reproductive choice. The living, breathing, sentient being that has control over her body is the one that we listen to. Not science. Science cannot be applied to my body. 
So I think we're, we're talking about science as if it's, it's something that um, it is absolutely concrete. There is absolute proof that there is, you know, life and there is not life and all this stuff like that. There's, I mean, there's people from this side, from their researchers, that say that the heart beats in 21 days. There's people on our side of research that says that the heart doesn't beat until 24 weeks. And so it just it is completely different. We need to focus on the birth control issue, and that's what you need to be thinking about, rather than any of the photos or scientific evidence that Nate just gave you. I mean, I have a cold, so to say that, I have a virus in my body, and that's, you know, that's also something little and living inside of me, but if, it, if I'm going to try and kill it, I'm not going to be like, oh no, woe is the virus thing, I, mean, I just killed the life, it's not something that... It's not the same thing. Um, anyone who's born with an X and a Y chromosome is biologically female. So, so Mark, Mark! Have you ever seen anyone drive down the 91 freeway with a yellow placard on their car that says virus on board. <laughs> Have you ever seen that? What, what, what a is, virus! What, what, I'd, I'd like to see what uh, the pro-life people had to say in yeah. response to that. Yeah. I mean, because that's... It had to be silly. more intelligent than what we were hearing. I, yeah, I couldn't believe it. it. It seems from the video that the pro-life side was bringing out science. Right. You know, and we get accused a lot for being unscientific. <laughs> yeah. You know, that we're against science, that we hate science. I mean, which is beyond silly. You know, it just simply means science simply means knowledge, right. right? So it seems from the video that knowledge was being presented and probably some very good scientific. It doesn't matter what you actually said, I think, inside that video um, to go up against those people. I've, I've actually been to a, an abortion, uh, pro life, pro choice debate. Okay. And uh, where was it? It was at uh, Golden West College. Okay. I think it was, or Orange Coast. And, and it was actually pretty good. I mean, I actually really enjoyed it. And I actually wouldn't mind being inside of a debate, something along that lines. Uh, but On the box at livingwaters.com. On the box at livingwaters.com. Let's do it, yeah. So, and, any, any, other, any other thoughts about uh, the. Uh, I mean, does that. If that's what I have to go up against, you know, I, 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 let's do it. <laughs> so, the. So everyone with an XY chromosome is a uh, is a female. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Huh? <laughs> All right. Yeah. What are your thoughts on that video? I I don't really know what to it, say. It's it was just stupid. Kinda... It was stupid, but I think it points out why 180 is so important hmm. and why this giveaway on more than 100 campuses. Uh, across uh, the United States, Canada, and New Zealand, that's going to happen later this year, is so important. That's next Tuesday. That is next. 200th? Yeah, next Tuesday. Uh, yeah, on the two hundred. Yes, next Tuesday, a week from Tuesday, whatever day the atheists want to believe that. And it's. what school are you going to? I'm going to the School of Hard Knocks. Hmm. Yeah, what school are you going to? I think UCLA. Are you really? Yeah, maybe we'll see. Love to talk to you. Yeah, but uh, but that's why we got to get 180 out because yeah. uh, the, granted, these were probably students in this debate. But they're getting their ideology from somewhere, and there are groups like Planned Parenthood who are lying to kids on campuses and comparing the unborn to viruses. That's um, and so let's get out there and, and get the truth to them. And here's the thing. You, know, you can believe whatever you want to believe. I, I'm, I'm okay with that. You can say whatever it is you want to say. There's freedom of speech. Sure. The, the problem herein lies no matter how with stupid. Your, your uneducated even on what the other side is even saying. Yeah. Right? So... Do you have any idea what the Christian side, what the pro-life side even is? You know, and I think that there, there becomes a disconnect with that. You know, uh, we see these people that are saying that uh, Ray is lying, that we set up Alicia in 180 um, with cue cards. You know, we're trying to be deceptive. We are lying to the audience in order to because they don't uh, have a case a point of view. It's... There's a complete misunderstanding what Christianity is all about, what right. we're trying to do. We're trying to save lives. Why would we lie? You know, it makes no sense. You know, we don't lie. We don't think that the means to the end is going to be able to be justified so we can do whatever we want in the middle right. to be able to get to the end. We, we, we ultimately believe that God is going to do what he wants to do. Amen. You know, so let the cards fall where they may, but allow truth to prevail and allow it to be spoken. Yeah. So. Yeah.
Uh, hey, should we hang out at high schools to distribute the 180? Oh, boy. Should we DVD? hang out at high schools to hand out 180? I would say absolutely. Because yeah. this is where my heart is at. Yes. You know, I mean, I want to go to the colleges. I think that we need to hang out outside of uh, frat houses and be able to hand out these DVDs. Absolutely. But I think that in the midst of the high school setting, this is where the whole experimentation happens. This is where they're handing condoms out to freshmen and telling them to go experiment. You don't know what you believe. You don't know if you want to like a girl or like a guy. So just go and experiment. Do whatever you want to do. So it's the high schools where I really have the heart for. Uh, I remember we were outside of a local high school here. We were on the sidewalk. In fact, there was a question asked, can I hang out on the sidewalk um, outside of a high school? I say, yes. yeah, absolutely. As long You're as it's public, public property. property. You bet. If it's public property, knock yourself out. So I want to go hit up the high schools. In fact, I'm going to hit up my ex-high school where I went to high school and hand out the 180 DVDs. I'm going to do it at the high schools school. up in Santa Clarita as well. We got seven or eight of them up in the Santa Clarita Valley. So Right, well, so I have a heart for the people who where I went to high school, so I want to go hand out 180s, and if that if that's something you can do, and if it's someone local, I'll join you. I want to go do that. That's where my heart is at. Yeah. So even before the colleges, hit up the high schools. Yeah, and if you're worried about the content, and uh, if it might be too much for a younger high school student, I encourage you to go check out what your students are watching on the computer at 1 or 2 in the morning, and it will probably pale in comparison, yeah. uh, or be much worse in comparison to... Uh, what they're going to see on 180. Yep. And, and nothing that they would see on 180 is any different than they would see on an eighth grade field trip to the Holocaust Museum in Washington, D.C. Uh, in fact, yep. they would probably see much more there uh, yep. over a longer period of time than anything they might experience within the 180 documentary. Yeah, you know, in fact, it's funny you say that because in working on this DVD, I had to oh. watch a whole lot of You're graphic better, pictures and videos over and over and, over and over and over and over and over and over again trying to see where... Can I fit something in? Go into the frame, you know, 30 frames per second. Can I use part of this? Can I do? It's just in my head. And I would go home, and my wife would just allow me to kind of uh, retox. Is that what it's called, retox? Detox. Detox. Up inside my room, and I'm just going, God, cleanse my mind. Yeah. Cleanse my mind of the things that I saw, you know, and trying to work things in. And so we had different cuts of the video where we would have very graphic portions of the Holocaust uh, or of abortion inside there and then ultimately said you know we're taking out 99.9 percent .9 of this and we're not going to use it yeah. the message itself is strong enough and if you're a high school student you have freedom of speech on your campuses mark and i we can't go onto a high school campus unannounced or uninvited to distribute right. dvds or to do anything else uh, and and that is those those kind of rules are imposed for the safety of the children and they they should be there yep. Uh, but you as a student, you have freedom of speech to hand out literature, to express your uh, political views, to express your uh, Christian convictions on campus. So long as you're not disrupting uh, the regular flow of uh, activity there on the campus, you're not disrupting your class, you can distribute 180 DVDs on your campus to, oh, other, wow. to other students. I was unaware of that. That's great. And if you are an adult, like us most of the time, and you're thinking about going to a local high school to hand out uh, DVDs, use discretion, use wisdom and discernment. Remember, you are approaching someone else's children. Um, yep. Keep that in mind. Uh, make sure that uh, all of your contact with the students is above reproach in every way. Have a partner out there with you right. uh, so no accusations can be made against you. Uh, I wouldn't stand in front of the door of the high school to do that. Uh, but look for a, a corner or an intersection you know, in close proximity to the school where the students are going to uh, move back and forth to get to and from the school. And uh, you probably run into fewer problems that way. But if most possible, definitely get videotape to it, wouldn't you say? Sure, yeah. Yeah. Also videotape it and even have these, boy, I was looking at this little USB card that uh, Anna has, and it's, uh, it records everything. You can't tell that it's a recording device. So I've been meaning actually to pick up one of those for uh, witnessing encounters and also when dealing with the police. Yeah, amen. Because police are crooked. Not all of them, just... There, there are a couple. Hey, look, the law enforcement community draws from the same fallible human race as every other profession. You have the good, the bad, and the ugly in law enforcement, just like... Uh, you do in any other profession. What's our next question? The next question is, should we show pictures of abortions during open-air preaching? Huh. huh. Should we? Um, I think I'm torn. I think it depends on the makeup of the crowd, the people where it's at. If, it's, if I'm on a university campus, I think, yeah, why not? You know, let, let's, this is what you're getting yourself into. If I'm out and about where little kids can walk by, you know, I, I probably wouldn't do it. But if 
if they're mainly adults, if it's late on a Friday or Saturday night, if there's the club scene going on and I'm protected, yeah, I probably would do it. Yeah, and you know, we've received a number of emails, uh, feedback uh, on uh, the 180movie.com site. And if you haven't seen the documentary yet, go to 180movie.com. You can watch it for free and you can give us your feedback. Uh, the response has been over 10 to 1 in favor of. Uh, 180, uh, positive toward 180. We have received a number of emails from people who are positive about the documentary who said we weren't graphic enough right. uh, in the documentary. And we had our reasons for not going um, that direction because we wanted to make sure that uh, people got through the entirety of the documentary uh, to hear the presentation of the law uh, and the gospel. That's right. Um, I agree with you, uh, by and large, on your position with the uh, abortion pictures. I wouldn't do it, personally, and uh, I think I've shared on the program, maybe not, you know the story, uh, out on Brand Boulevard in Glendale, someone came out with a six-foot-tall picture of an aborted baby. Now, okay, it's, it's you know six times larger than the actual baby, and... Presumably, they were there to share the gospel, but they never got to the gospel. Right. And I, I will never forget one man walking by with his little girl, probably four or five years old, picking her up, holding her tight in his arm, shielding her eyes, and screaming, it's not working, it's not working. Right. And for me, that's enough of a distraction from what I'm there to do ultimately, proclaim the law and the gospel, to not use images like that. But we have, we have a number, I can think of a number of people uh, godly folks who are preaching a biblical gospel out on the streets who uh, disagree. So in the end, I think it's a matter of conscience. Anything good coming out of there? No. Okay. What do you say to someone who professes to be a Christian and uh, they say they are against abortion for themselves, but they support a woman's right to choose? Well, um, well, I, you know, I think we dealt with that in the 180, you know, you can say there hey, was one lady. Oh, <laughs> she drove me crazy. I'm sorry. Just drove me crazy. Right, it was the silver lady. Well, no, no I'm not. Was, I'm not. Um, yeah, the silver lady. But I'm thinking about the uh, the young Asian lady who said she had a Bible in the car. Oh, right. Remember? Yep. Well, what kind of life is that? Kind of. And then I, I, oh. I, all right. So, yeah, you know, um, you know, Ray Ray brought this out with uh, with a guy with the curly hair, the Jewish gentleman over at Sridhar's College, and he had said. Uh, you know, can, can you say that's a lot like saying, hey, you know, I'm not for what Hitler did. I think what, mm -hmm. he, what he's doing is wrong, but it's, it's his choice. He can decide for himself what he wants to do, especially when you remove yourself out of this whole equation and say, you know, it's not me being murdered. You know, it's easy to make decisions when it comes to somebody else's life. Mm -hmm. You know, so, yeah. yeah, I think you can make any decisions you want to make for your body. But guess what? That baby is not you. So how do you make a decision for that baby? You know, yeah. it's, it's, it's ridiculous. And we were talking yesterday on, on the air here that uh, if, uh, if a woman is on drugs and that child uh, gets harmed, that woman can be uh, um, prosecuted, prosecuted yep. for, for being high and now that baby being addicted to drugs. But however, if that woman were to go over to a doctor, that doctor can kill that baby inside. So it's illegal to harm the child, but it's okay to kill the child. Scott Peterson was convicted of double homicide of his wife and his yet-to-be-born child. Right. It's a, that's a great point. But a doctor can go and perform a late-term abortion. And it's not a baby. And be a hero right. in uh, you know, the pro-choice, uh, pro-abortion community. Yes. There's an inconsistency there. But to the question... Uh, you know what? Maybe the person's uneducated. That's possible. But I don't, I don't see any possible way that a person can be a genuine follower of Jesus Christ and maintain that it is okay to murder unborn children. Yeah. It is utterly inconsistent with a biblical Christian world view. Right. We speak it for those who have no voice of their own. Amen. All right, I'm a first-generation Christian, this person writes. I grew up with a very narrow-minded concept of God. My grandmother on my father's side is a Jehovah's Witness, grandfather an alcoholic on my mother's side. Grandfather is a backslidden Catholic, grandmother deceased, which left my dad bitter towards God, and my mother a confused agnostic. Okay. Wow. Um, I was saved in October of 2009, about two years ago, and for the past two years I've been witnessing to my family to no avail. When I came across this teaching, The Way of the Master, it just made so much sense. I've purchased both The Way of the Master and the School of, the, of Biblical Evangelism books, and it reignited the fire 
uh, in me once again. But still, after numerous conversations with my mom and innumerable emails to my grandmother, who's a Jehovah's Witness, I feel like all efforts have been exhausted and unsuccessful. It pains me and breaks my heart that there are literally millions, if not billions of people in this world that have been brainwashed and despite our most gallant efforts, in their own ignorance, they will die in their sin and go to hell. I cannot help but to feel discouraged. I see your videos uh, of Ray Comfort talking to atheists, and when I hear their arguments, it breaks my heart. Is this normal? I guess my question to you is, do you ever feel the same way? Is it normal to be discouraged, or am I sinning against God? And if you can relate to this, then how do you even sleep at night? Yeah, um, I can relate to all of that. You yes. know, I, mean, that I think you just described every working American family. family. Um, <laughs> well, what do you do? You know, it's been said that there's no softer pillow than a clear conscience. You know, so though it's hard to share the truth and people reject the truth, whether it be family or friends or enemies, um, I still can uh, go to bed at night, you know, and I, I still can. Um, he keeps him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on him. Amen. You know, at the end of the day, uh, you know, I, I guess we could take it a step further. How can you enjoy heaven knowing that your loved ones rejected God and are going to hell? Well, there comes a place, there comes a time when you say, just and true are your judgments, O God. Where we agree with God uh, on the judgment that he did, whether it be towards family and friends. It doesn't make me happy to know that I have uh, loved ones that reject God altogether. It, and it does make it difficult. And I do get up in the night, uh, you know, praying for my family. Uh, I do uh, reach out to them continually. And I make it my aim to reach out to my family before I reach out to somebody who I don't know. Um, it, it is hard, but this is the life we live We live in. And we're homesick for a home we've never been to. So I pray that we, it doesn't, our hearts don't grow old in the midst of this. And we do continually cry out for those who won't cry for themselves. Yeah. So, uh yeah, it, it's hard, and it makes us uh, cling even tighter uh, to the risen Savior. And, and you know what? If you're not uh, discouraged, certainly not to the point of sinning against God, but if you're not discouraged that people aren't coming to repentance and faith in Christ, uh, if you're a Christian and you have no concern for the lost, then you ought to be asking yourselves if you're even a Christian to begin with. Mm. Right? That, that famous Charles Spurgeon quote, if you have no concern uh, for the lost, how does that go? If you have no wish for others to be saved. Saved. Are then you, you're not saved yourself? Yeah, exactly. Sure so the fact that you are concerned, the fact that you are brokenhearted about people that you love and, and even those who you don't know who, who are bound for hell apart from Christ, the fact that you are concerned, I believe, is fruit of the Spirit yeah. that, that indicates that your, your heart is, uh, at least in that area, uh, right before God and, and soft uh, before Him. But you need to persevere. You can't quit. Um, and you need to remember that salvation is of the Lord. Uh, salvation is not dependent upon your efforts to win your family or anyone else to Christ. God is sovereign in Correct. salvation. And the only time you fail in evangelism, if you're doing it biblically, is when you fail to evangelize. So no effort uh, yeah. for the glory of Christ and for the sake of the lost is an effort in vain if you are bringing a true gospel to lost Amen. and dying people. Have you ever done a one-to-one -one and it turned out to be a Christian and not a false convert? Yeah, absolutely. And then we begin to fellowship. Yeah. You know, I say, hey, so typically when somebody says that they're a Christian, uh, I say, where do you go to church at? And then they tell me where they go to church. And I go, oh, where are you at in the word? And they go, oh, this is where I'm at in the word. And I go, oh, great. You know, awesome. Hey, and then I try to give them uh, maybe some material that I have, mm -hmm. you know, uh, the Hell's Best Kept Secret CD or, hey, have you heard of this? Have you seen this? You know, just try to fellowship with them. And I go my way. But yeah, I have. You know, I think we live in a place where... We are Bible saturated. It's not the Bible belt as it is back uh, in Texas or some area like that. But I do come across a lot of people that do go to church uh, that are Christians. And I think it's great. And I just move on. Yeah. yeah, I've run into a few. It's not too many, though. I mean, would you say you run into more false converts than genuine followers of oh, Christ? Yeah, yeah by and large. Yeah, and, and I do much the same thing you do. Where do you go to church? You know, are you reading the Bible? And that oftentimes, if the conversation lasts long enough, I'll take them through three minutes to live which is often a yeah, good, good indicator as to whether or not the person is saved because you can't be saved by a gospel you don't, you don't know. Um, I actually had someone on Saturday. I was out at the uh, Santa Monica Pier preaching. And uh, as I was walking down to the pier, I actually had somebody hand me a gospel tract. Wow. It was the first time. I've been a Christian now for uh, 23 years. And it was the first time anyone had ever handed me a gospel tract and it was a terrible gospel tract. The gospel wasn't in there. The law wasn't used. It was a, a works 
system. You know, you got to do right. these six things huh. to be saved. And uh, it was discouraging. I had a track given to me from uh, Little Richard. Really? Yeah. Oh, that's right. You yeah. Was that on a plane? I was on a plane. Yeah. He gave me a Seventh-day Adventist uh, gospel track. <sighs> and I gave him a track. Uh, I first gave him a track, and then he gave me one in return. Yeah. So, Find a question. While he's finding a question, I want to remind you, deeper at livingwaters.com, deeper at livingwaters.com, we have a select number of complimentary tickets that we do want to give away. If you're certain that you can come to the conference October 14th and 15th at Calvary Community Church in Westlake Village uh, here in Southern California, if you're certain you can come and you'd be interested in more information and about how you might be able to obtain some of those complimentary tickets, deeper at livingwaters.com. All right. Is that enough time? Yep. So uh, how do you handle a motor mouth asking questions like a machine gun while trying to witness to them? At some point, I'll put up my hands and say, excuse me, just a minute. If I answer all of your questions to your satisfaction, will you drop to your knees, repent, and put your trust in Christ as your Lord and your Savior? Well, No. I want to thank you so much for talking to you, but uh, I'm going to go talk to someone else. Have a great day. Yeah. What would you do? You know, I say, well, sl slow down, you know, uh, slow down. Let, let me answer one question at a time. And after I answer a question, um, I'll go right back for their conscience. And I'll say, now, what are you going to do? You, I answered your question. Now it's your turn. What are you going to do on judgment day? You've already admitted to me to being a liar, a thief, an adulterer. You can't stand before a holy God, and that fears me. And I have more fear for you than you have for yourself. What are you going to do, man? So I try, to, I, I try to slow them down. If they don't slow down, hey, I really like that technique. I mean, that was great. Do you find that most people, though, that uh, when they come up just hitting you with a barrage of questions, that by and large those people aren't really looking for answers, yeah. but oh, just yeah, they don't justification for their unbelief? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, so. All right, so... We are about out of time. Yes. You're going off to uh, speak at the Ghost Tan yes. Speak Conference. Yes. In, uh, is it in New York or New it's Jersey? It's in New Jersey it's with Jeremiah New Jersey. Cry. Jeremiah Cry is hosting that. It's going to be a great conference. Two brand new messages from Mark. A lot yep. of good fellowship with uh, some uh, biblical street evangelists from around the country. If you're in the New Jersey area, there's still time to sign up. Uh, go to Jeremiah Cry yep. Ministries uh, website, and I'm sure you can go there. Or go stand speak, their website as well, yep. and uh, go see Mark in New Jersey. Until tomorrow, be encouraged, strengthened, and unafraid. Proclaim the gospel. Living Waters presents On the Box.